Thank you very much. Uh, you know, when you're going to be on a panel discussion and you're going to be up with other speakers and you've never seen their presentation, you always hope that what you're going to be saying is not in direct conflict to what everybody else is. And I can tell you what I'm fixed to tell you is almost mirrors exactly what the Jacobs team does, uh, have, has shared with us. What I'm going to do is actually give you some real numbers from a real project and, um, and then talk about some of the, the things that we've done at DFW Airport uh, some of the technologies that we've looked at, some of the options like PPA to try to give you an idea of what we think is relevant for the environment that we're in. Um, as was pointed out earlier, because some of the states, some of the cities, uh, some of the areas are in regulated environments, some are in deregulated environments, every deregulated environment is different. And so what we tell you that will or will not work in one location may not necessarily work. You just got to really stay engaged. Um, on the agenda here, um, first of all, I'll do a little bit of introduction. Then I'm going to talk about the ADE or Airport Development and Engineering Office Building. That's where we actually installed our array. We'll talk about the actual installation that took place and I will provide for you some what I'm calling 2012 economic numbers that's actually this array went into service in January of 2012 so I'll let you know what the economic environment looked like then then I'll share with you what the economic environment looks like today based on information that I've received and uh, and then I'll offer a conclusion or my thoughts on it to begin with, just I always find it's important to understand, for you to understand who's talking to you and what their background is so you understand where they're coming from. I'm not a salesman. I'm not trying to sell anything. I actually spent 20 years with the uh, TXU Energy, or actually it was Tesco and TPNL and TU Electric and TU Electric and Gas and all of this but during my 20 year times there. Uh, so I have a pretty substantial uh, utility background. I uh, spent most of my time in distribution engineering and key accounts. Uh, then in 2000, as uh, the electric utility industry in Texas was being deregulated, I was actually hired by DFW Airport to become their energy manager. So I've now been there for 15 years. And I am not an electrical engineer. I manage the business of energy on behalf of the airport. I negotiate all utility contracts, that's natural gas, electricity, propane, diesel fuel, compressed natural gas, uh, water, sanitary sewer services, all of that type of stuff. In addition to that, the crews on the airport that work the electrical systems on behalf of the airport work for me, and I'm responsible for the relationships between the utilities that serve the airport primary Atmos and Encore and the airport community. My first and foremost job is to maintain reliability at the airport. Those planes have to have electricity flowing in order for them to take off and land safely. So that's what I look for first. The second thing I look for is safety and security, primarily for the people that are working on those systems in the traveling public. Third, I look at price. Fourth, I look at the sustainability aspect, because that is not my primary. Now, we have a department at the airport who does nothing but sustainability. But again, I'm letting you see where I'm coming from. Okay, the airport development and engineering building uh, was originally constructed in 2000. It has about 41,000 square foot of office space. Uh, before the PV array was installed, this facility had a peak KW of 244 KW, and it consumed about 1.1 million kilowatt hours annually. Now, it's important to understand when you're talking about PV, these two numbers play different roles. After the PV was actually installed, what we saw was this demand actually went down only about 5 to 6 percent, where the kilowatt hour consumption went down about 20, 23 to 25 percent. Okay? 
So, and that's another thing, when we're using numbers like six cents a kilowatt hour, 11 cents a kilowatt hour, that's an all-in price that reflects both the demand charge and the kilowatt hour charge. So if you're really doing a deep dive economic study, you're gonna split those out and apply the actual rates. I have not done that in this presentation because I did it in two and a half days. So <laughs> um, it's, it's not gonna be quite that deep a dive. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the big building here in the, the center, this is the Airport Development and Engineering Building. This is the uh, South Service Road of International Parkway going through the airport. And the picture I got was off of uh, Google. And as you can see, all of the, uh, the array was installed at that time. Okay, um, the installation actually took place from like November of 2011 into January of 2012. The, the array was actually turned on and began producing electricity in January of 2012. There's 737 panels. Uh, they're rated at about 186 kW DC. These panels produce direct current. They go into an inverter. The inverter inverts it or changes it to AC and then that's fed into the building. So, uh, whoops, excuse me. There we go. All right, so we actually have uh, a 186 kW worth of panels there that feed into 150 kW worth of inverters. So the output value of this system is 150 kW. It cost us $1.1 million in 2012 to build this array for 186 kW. This is how it happened. Uh, we were actually approached by a, a firm back in the recession that uh, had worked with some other entities on solar projects and their primary funding source was the ERA, or American Reconstruction Renewal Act. I probably got that wrong, but it's something like that. There, there you go. Okay, and so they said, look, uh, we know all the pitfalls, we can help you get through here. And so we had not had any significant solar production on the airport. We wanted to learn from it. So we jumped on board. So the initial cost uh, or the installation cost of the whole project was $1.1 million. We got $922,000 from the federal government, which was funded through SECO, the State Energy Conservation Office. Encore kicked in $200,000. That only left $10,000 left between the initial cost, and so the airport kicked in that much. So we got a $1.1 million array for $10,000. Sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? Okay, if you look over here, you'll see that the array produces on average about, and I just rounded it, 25% of the building's energy needs or about 270,000 kilowatt hours annually. And if you look at my current rate, all in, demand everything, it's about 6.7 cents per kilowatt hour. So that uh, will give you somewhere around the neighborhood of $18,000 in savings annually. So if you come down here and do the simple payback, and I know this is simple, I actually teach in energy economics, so we're not talking time value of money or escalation rates or anything like it's a simple payback, but if you put our $10,000 and the $18,000 savings, we recouped our money in about seven months. Real good deal. All right, now let's pretend there are no subsidies. $1.1 million, $18,000 per year. It takes me 63 years to pay back that array. And that's mounted on my building and feeding directly into my infrastructure. I don't pay any transportation charges. Now, I will share with you that we, um, we signed an interconnect agreement with Encore, which everyone has to do. And I actually went to my retail electric provider and told uh, them, look, 
I'm going to be consuming almost everything that these panels produce, but there is an opportunity for at some point in time where I will be producing more. And that's actually happened. I may produce 200, 300, maybe 1,000 kilowatt hours a month that I push back on the grid. They amended our electric service agreement and they pay us an index rate for what I push back on the grid, which is probably about a quarter or a third of what I actually buy the commodity for, something like that. So you're not going to get rich pushing electricity back on the grid. If you're going to spend the money to put this array in place, you want to consume it because that's where your savings is going to be. Any questions about any of this? Okay. Uh, where I actually met Tamara was at a conference at UT Arlington probably about two months ago. There was a gentleman there, I believe it was from Plano, and he, he gave us this rule of thumb for cost of installing PV arrays. And he said that it was $4 per watt for residential and $3 per watt for commercial. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's where I got this number from. So that's, if I use that and come in and do my calculation, you'll see that at today I've got 150 kW times the $3, that's 450000 I guarantee if this was being built at the airport, this would be at least $650,000. Okay, but I'm, we're not going to pretend that it's being built at the airport. So we're coming down here and we look at it. We still have, in today's numbers, a 25-year simple payback on this project. And I think that was right in line with a lot of what you were talking about. And that's me consuming it directly off the panels and not feeding it into Encore's distribution system. Wrong direction. Okay. Just to kind of give you some examples, whenever you hook up one of these arrays, one of the things that they typically do is they'll stick a TV monitor somewhere where everybody can see it in the lobby and you walk through there and they can go, oh, they must have panels on the wall. All right, this comes directly off of our array at the ADE building. I took this yesterday on March the 30th, uh, 2015 at 1028. And you can say on that particular day, at that time, the panels, 186 kW, 737 panels had produced 68 kilowatt hours by 10 o'clock. For the entire month of March, minus a day or a half, it had produced 17,000 kilowatt hours. And for the roughly three years that those panels had been up there, it's produced 864,000 kilowatt hours. One thing I've noticed, if you take a look at that, if you take a look at the annual consumption and kind of do the math, basically because it's producing 25% of the energy that's consumed by that building every four years, I get free electricity for one year. And kind of a neat way of looking at it. But it, it doesn't change the fact that it takes 60 years to pay it back. But but an interesting way to look at it. So just to kind of uh, double check myself, I took these numbers. You took this one down here, you applied our current electric rate. Now again, this is an all-in uh, commodity and transportation. So it saved me about $1,100 for the month of March. And if you take the, uh, the total that it's produced times that, it's about $57,000, $58,000 over a three-year period of time. I pay about $75,000 a year for electricity for this building. So again, at the end of the four years, that'll be about $75,000 that I save, I get one year free. Uh, on the environmental side, again, this screen that I was telling you about that's in the lobby, uh, honestly, I'm sure this is important to someone, but I wouldn't know a ton of knocks if it hit me on the head. So I don't know if this is good or bad or indifferent, but these are the numbers that show up on the screen. And if anyone is interested, this is actually a public accessible web address that you can go to at any time to see what uh, our solar array is actually producing. It shows 
the consumption of the building, what's being generated from the panels, and how much is being pulled for a grid. It's, it's actually a pretty neat. I wish I had that on every building in the airport, <laughs> but, but I don't. So in conclusion, I am a huge fan of solar power. And this comes from my utility backgrounds because it produces electricity when the Texas grid needs the electricity to be produced. Okay, I, I think that's great. Uh, the technology is reliable. In the three years that we've had it there, we've had a couple of hiccups on the inverters where we had to come in and do some tweaking, replace a couple of boards and stuff like that. But overall, for the three years, it's been up and running most of the time. So I've been happy with the reliability. Uh, the initial cost of the technology is dropping significantly. You can see from when I showed you the 2011-2012 economics versus today's economics, it's almost been cut in half. Uh, the utility, in, uh, utility, the installers and the code inspectors are becoming more familiar with the technologies. Actually, five years ago, it was hard to find an electrician that knew how to install one without getting himself knocked off the building. But in conclusion, without significant subsidies, the, the PV arrays in Texas, in the competitive market right now, where I can get a commodity electricity at 4.3 cents a kilowatt hour, it's really tough for them to be competitive with the grid. So uh, all of that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I believe that, yep, that was it. Any questions that you may have on, on this? Hey Jerry, I yes. had a question. I uh, just crunch the numbers real quick, and the install cost per DC watt was about just over six dollars, I believe, per watt. And just remembering back to 2012, that seemed a little bit in the high end. Did did the costs actually come in higher than what was originally projected with the original business plan? I have to be honest with you, I wasn't too involved in in that uh, aspect of it. Uh, once they got into the airport and it became apparent that it really wasn't going to cost us much. This was really handled by our capital group. Um, the only, I just kind of played an advisory role of as far as providing them energy usage for the building and things of that nature. For anyone who has ever done business at DFW Airport, it is very expensive to do business out there because of the insurance requirement, the security, the badging of the employees, all of those types of things, and that typically drives our cost up significantly. That's why I had commented that that 450000 would probably be 650000 um, I would not be surprised if people thought that $1.1 million was high. It probably was, but that's the number that we paid. A quick question. Um, the rate that you're paying for your energy is also seems a, a bit lower than what we're typically seeing in the area, and that's because uh, I'm very a good at what I do. No, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, actually, uh, that's another presentation I do: energy procurement. Um, we actually set up a process where we're doing a reverse energy auction. Uh, we hired a company. We develop an RFP, we identify all of the REPs that want to do business with us, we get them trained on a website, and it's like eBay in reverse. On a particular day, at a particular time, they log in, and for the next hour and a half, they're beating each other up trying to get our business. We buy about $18 million worth of electricity a year. So we got a big stick, I guess you would say. And so that really drives our commodity price down. And because we're an airport that's 24-7, 365, if you look at the, the total rate, that keeps your, uh, your load factor down, if you will. So uh, commodity, I would say we're in the 4.3 cents per kilowatt hour range. Transportation charge generally runs about two cents per per kilowatt hour. If you, I've got over 300 electric accounts and uh, 300 million kilowatt hours annually, something I can't remember, it's a, it's a big number, like I said, about $18 million a year. 
So that helps us drive down those, those costs, which of course makes it very difficult for somebody to come in and compete with the grid uh, when your commodity costs. But as you pointed out, if you're in Hawaii or you're in California or you're up in New York, that completely changes the game. And one of the things I'll comment, uh, if someone comes to you and says, look, we've done this modeling and look how much money it's going to save you. And you look on there and you see an energy escalation rate of 5% for 20 years, ignore it and send them out the door. Because my electricity cost has been going down over the last five years. It hasn't been elevating for 5% a year. So you've got to be, make sure that those numbers on those spreadsheets are accurate. Usually when I'm doing escalation rates, the escalation rate is zero right now. Because honestly, with uh, all of the shell play that's going on, the fact that over 50% of the generation in Texas is natural gas, I'm not seeing escalation rates of 5% or anywhere close to that for the next five or 10 years.